The Sir Isaac Newton contest is fast approaching for all the high school physics students, so here's one more question to help you get ready for it. And if you need more, don't forget to subscribe and check out my playlist on Sir Isaac Newton contest questions. All right, so in this question, you have your physics teacher drives a frictionless car of mass 1,000 kilograms and then coasts on a level road at a speed of 48 kilometers an hour with the engine turned off. And then it coasts up a 40 meter slope and comes to a perfect rest at the stop without any braking. Now one day, he found that his engine is required 50 kilowatts of power just to maintain this 40 kilometers per hour speed on the level road due to a layer of loose snow. Calculate the new speed required from the coast up this 40 meter hill with the engines off as usual. All right, so let's look at this problem from a point of view of energy conservation. So right here, if we ignore the snow, we have all kinetic energy. So that's one half mv, and I'll call it v1 squared. So v1 will be no snow. And then he's going to coast all the way up the hill, coming to a rest, gaining only gravitational energy. So let's call it mgh. That's going to be equation one. Now let's look at the situation when we have snow. So when we have snow, we're going to need some sort of velocity here, and therefore kinetic energy, one half mv. This is going to be a new velocity, a higher velocity, so v2 squared. That 2 will be with snow. And it's going to move right up to the top, so we're going to get gravitational energy, mgh. It'll be the same as before. But then we're also losing energy to the work done by this snow. So let's call it some retarding force, f times a displacement. Now the power being 30 kilowatts, oh, I wrote that in wrong, so not 50, 30 kilowatts, is required to maintain this velocity of 48 kilometers per hour. So we know that power is work over time. It's our equation for power. I usually tell my students that my friend power is always upset at their boss because they're always made to work over time. And we know that work is force times displacement. And I know that displacement over time is velocity. So that just equals force times velocity. And that's going to be V1 because that's the power required to maintain that original V1 velocity of 48 kilometers per hour. So I can rearrange this equation to solve for that retarding force. F equals power over V1. And I can substitute that into equation 2. So we had 1 half mv2 squared equals mgh plus that force I'm going to rewrite as power over v1. And then I still have this times displacement. What I can also do is substitute equation 1 for this gravitational potential energy as the kinetic energy from one. So this leads us with one half mv2 squared equals one half mv1 squared plus power times displacement over v1. Now in this equation, I know everything except for v2. So I can rearrange the solve for v2 now. So I'll simply multiply both sides by, of the equation by two to get rid of this half term. So we have mv2 squared equals mv1 squared plus 2p delta d over v1. And divide both sides by m. So we have v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2p delta d over mv1. And then we take the square root of both sides. So now we can start subbing in some numbers here. So v2 is going to be the square root of v1 squared, which is 48 
But if we change that into meters per second, we get 13.3 meters per second. So we have 13.3 squared plus 2 times the power is 30 kilowatts, which is 30,000 watts, changing everything into SI units, times our displacement, which is 40 meters, all divided by the mass, which is 1,000 kilograms, times that initial velocity in meters per second, 13.3 meters per second, which gives us a final velocity of 18 0.9 meters per second or multiply by 3.6 to get 68 kilometers an hour or our answer is C.